stirred up because I'm, I'm seeing new levels of faith arise. It's the power of teaching faith. When people grab it, they start to walk in faith. And when you see people walking in faith, where people are walking in faith, you're going to see manifestation. I see businesses being started. That's a faith move. Amen. Because the one thing I've come to know is this. I can't bless myself. Come on. I can't. But I serve a God that bless those that diligently serve him. Come on. I serve a God that is a giver. He's a blesser. And, and because he's a blesser, as I diligently, that means consistently, not every now and then hit and miss when it feels good, when I'm not tired. I, I, you do it even when you're tired. When you're pursuing a dream, when you're pursuing purpose, when you, you passionately do it. And to be passionate is to be ignited. It's to be energized. When Even when your energy is low, your spirit is high when you're pursuing God passionately. That's what I love about pursuing God. It takes the Holy Spirit in us to pursue God because our natural man does not understand these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, The natural man does not understand the things of the Spirit of God. It's foolishness to him. So it takes, your, it takes the Spirit of God igniting your spirit to get you to pursue passionately. And when you have that passion, you have faith. Because faith will c constantly fuel your passion. And the thing about faith is faith will not let you quit. When a person has made up their mind, when they have drawn a line in the sand and made a determination that, by, that, that I'm going to believe, I'm going to stand in faith, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to keep going, I don't care what it looks like, you can't talk them out of it. When you really believe, you can't be talked out of it. When you really believe, you can't be talked out of it. Nobody can talk you out of it, including you. Right. Even when you try to tell yourself, uh, this, you know, maybe, I, maybe I should just try something else. Your spirit be like, "What? We in too deep to retreat? What you talking about? All right, now. You better keep going. Yeah. You know what we saw? Yeah. Your spirit start talking to your soul and telling your soul, shh, hush, 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 because your spirit saw what God." was showing you. It happens by the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 said, God revealed these things to us by his Spirit. So spiritually, we see these great exploits, and our spirit gets so ignited. And by faith, we start to pursue them. This morning, we're going to continue on in our faith series. We've been really delving into faith. Yes. 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 I think people have a intellectual understanding of faith. I believe most believers have an intellectual understanding of faith. But faith is greater than intellectually understanding it. Faith has to be not intellectually understood. It has to be held on to by your heart. Faith is a matter of the heart. Not this thing that is beating that is beating right now and sending blood throughout your body, faith has to be inhabited by your inner man. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. In the New Living Translation, it says, above all else, guard your heart, for it affects everything you do. Because your heart is the seat of your being. It's not the seat of your soul, it's the seat of your being. It's that part of you that is most godlike. In the Hebrew, in the old Hebrew text, there was no word for mind. So they would use words like heart to describe the mind, because there was no word called mind yet. So when the Lord is talking about the heart, he's talking about the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4.23 says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That means your mind is very much like the tabernacle. Come on. Your mind is a triune thing. And what's so powerful about the mind is we know it's there. It just can't be located. Oh. Ask the doctor, where's your mind? They'll tell you it's somewhere in the brain, and but I can't see it on an MRI 
or a CAT scan. I can't, they can't see the mind, they can't locate the mind, but they know that the mind exists because the Bible tells us, be renewed in the spirit of our mind. The Bible speaks often about the mind because the mind is the place of in you where all decisions are made. When you make a decision, it's not from your brain. Your brain is an organ that holds data. Your mind is something that is eternal. Come on, yeah. Mm. So it is with the mind that man believes unto righteousness. Right. It's with the heart. You got. You can't even believe God without your heart being engaged in that in that moment. That's right. Yeah. You can't. You can't believe God. So God wants us to understand that faith is a heart thing. People have been living by intellectual faith, meaning faith that they can understand. Right. Uh, uh, come on. Yeah. Oh, God is saying something yeah. this morning. He's yeah. speaking yeah. to you guys. Here's what I want you to do. Instead of you guys just uh, looking, I want you to get your Bibles out, and I want you to get your something that you can take notes on. Come on. Yeah. Be Amen. Your, your, Amen. I, I believe in writing down the things that Amen. God says to me. Yeah. And I believe in writing down the things that God says to me because if I don't write them down, and God says something profound, two days later, I might not remember it. Right. Right. But if I've been a good steward of what God has given yeah. me, I, being a good steward means I, I take the time to make sure that these things are in place. I, to, I take time to make sure that I have the information so that I can receive the revelation of these things. That's stewardship. Amen. Stewardship is like what God told me this morning. I, you know, I, I've had a busy, busy week, and, and then I had a busy weekend, and I, I plan on taking a day of rest and just kind of kicking back and really resting, but that didn't happen. So I had a busy, busy week. Of, uh, my weekend has been even busy. And I haven't had that time of rest where I'd like to take and just really commune with right, God. Right. Yeah. And so uh, this morning I woke up and I didn't feel my normal flow, uh, my normal flow that I feel right before I minister. There's a flow that a minister likes to Come feel on. before they get up. Because the last thing I want to get up here and do is tell you what I feel. Come on. Amen. Amen. I want Amen. to catch what the Holy Spirit has to say yeah. and then release that by the Spirit by the of the Spirit. Lord and Come not on. by my own flesh. Amen. The worst Amen. thing you could get is some fleshly preaching Amen. that Amen. sounds good, but Amen. it has right. no right. transformational right. power. Right. Amen. Right? Amen. You hear, we hear enough of that in, in other places. No, I, I want to be on point with God so that me and all of God's people get a word. Amen. When I'm praying for a message, I say, God, what do you want to say to us? Amen. I yeah. never just talk about them. I always include Kim. Yeah. Amen. Because yeah. Kim need a word as well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and so I didn't have my normal flow. And, and I found myself this morning saying, God, I need your help. And he said, all you got to do is ask for it. Uh-huh. I said, I, you know, th there are some Sundays that even the pastor don't want to come to church. Right. So I understand the Sundays. Y'all be like, oh, I'm going to kick back and watch it on the media today. <laughs> it's a good day to watch the pastor and the football game. <laughs> Because we got two TVs in the house. <laughs> Amen. 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 I'd be like, oh, yeah, Pastor, you got that. And so there are times when even the pastor, the leaders, we get tired too. We There are Sundays where we want to just stay home and, and, and really relax and do nothing. Now, this would have been a great, great Sunday for me to do that. But then the Lord spoke something to me. He said this. It, it was so quiet and so gentle that it brought tears to my eyes. He said, if you're faithful over the little. Come on. That's it. Faithful just over the little. You want a bigger life? Be faithful over the little life you got right now. Or what seems small to you. What seems small. Because what seems small to you in the eyes of God, God's not looking at just your location. He's always looking at your destination. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. destiny that he's called for you. So he said, if you're faithful over the little. And that was enough to just kind of stir me up. My energy level went up. I said, okay, then you got something real for us. You got something for us. He yeah. said, yeah. I, I'm, doing, I'm talking to my people about faith because when I'm talking about something, I'm increasing it. I'm blessing it. Amen. I'm doing it. God yeah. don't just talk to talk. He talk to do. Come on. Amen. He's a doer of Amen. the word. Yes, he is. Woo. Amen. So that little bit of um, being faithful over the little bit that you have. You steward that business this year, and that business is going to take off, and you're going to see the manifestation of greatness. You're going to be the next Wall Street giant. You're going to be the next, you might be the, the next entrepreneur that takes it by storm. All you got to do is just be faithful, and the only way to be faithful is to operate in faith. faith. 
Thank you. You guys are saying that this morning. Yeah. Faith, right? Yeah. Without faith, you cannot please God and you can't even please yourself because you won't believe for nothing. You'll watch everybody else's dreams come true and you'll be sitting around angry that yours didn't. But they believed God and then they stepped out in faith. Huh. Believing God means you. after you believe, you receive, and then you step out in faith to apprehend, yeah. to take it. Yeah. Amen. So Amen. everybody's got their Bible out, yes. right? Yes. Get something to write with. If it's your iPad, I know you young people use a lot of media. Get, get something to write with because God's going to say something to you. He's already said something to you. Amen. So if he's already said something to you, take a moment. Amen. Go back and write it down. If he said something to you in the worship. Sometimes I get my greatest revelations in the worship. Yeah. I see angelic in habitation during the worship. Uh -huh. I see the yeah. angels moving. I, that's why I love worship. Yeah, I don't understand too. people that don't yeah. like worship. I don't either. I, I don't get it. I, I mean, it, it's just a part of my being. It's like yeah. I was cut from the worship cloth. Amen. Amen. From the prayer. I, I mean, I, I'm from the tribe of Judah. Amen. 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 Which means I'm like David. Yeah. I just get dirty and sweaty yeah. and just everybody else be looking good. I have to worship my hair. By the time I get up to preach, my makeup's running. My hair's all sweaty. I'm all. I'm like, oh Lord, I don't look that good on camera. But maybe not naturally, but spiritually. spiritually. Anybody yeah. that's got spiritual eyes can say, that girl's been somewhere in the spirit. Yeah. 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 Yes. So we're gonna start our text out this morning in First Corinthians, Woo. chapter two. First Corinthians is in the New Testament. So I want you to join me there. It's after the book of Romans. First Corinthians chapter 2 is where we're going. First Corinthians chapter 2. You got your phone out to get your Bible? You need a Bible? Yeah, we, we talking to everybody in the sanctuary. We're not just talking to the big people. We're talking to the little people too. We want to teach our children Amen. how to how to be faith giants. Yeah. We want you guys to end up in the hall of faith. Amen. All right, First Corinthians. I, I love it. Mamas are like, hey, grandmas, hey, get your phone out. You got a phone? I'm paying that phone bill. You better have a Bible app on that. Bible app. <laughs> Tell them, mama. Amen. <laughs> Hey, the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. If you need to use the rod, take them in the restroom. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2, are we all there? Yeah. All right, we're going to start at verse 1, and uh, we're going to read down to verse 5 or so. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Here's what it says, and I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration. That's a word right yeah, there. Amen. Somebody ought to yeah. highlight that in your Bible. Yeah. In demonstration of the spirit and of power amen. that your faith, somebody say my faith, my faith, should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's a blessed word, Father. Amen. Open, I opened my mouth and you yes, said you will God. fill it. So we trust you to fill my mouth that we would all be fed fresh manna in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Jesus. What a powerful word. Yes. Paul yes. the Apostle, who, who, whose life very much like ours started out so conflicted. His ministry was so conflicted in the initial stages of his ministry. He started out as a as a Pharisee, as a well-learned man of the law, and studied well. It, and it's something you go get all of these, all of this education, and, you, and then you find out that God don't really need all of that because what he's put in you didn't need the PhD. 
<laughs> you got the Holy Spirit in you, and that's your PhD right there. Not that he would discard your education. God turns and uses it all for good. It all comes together and works for good. But I found out that through a lot of uh, worldly study that a lot of that stuff that I studied had nothing to do with my destiny. Amen. But God knows how to use it because there might be that one person that I might meet that has, that was studying that and then I can share my faith with them and how I studied that and got to this point. Amen. And that just recently happened to me on Friday when I met someone for, uh, for a meeting. Paul, he has this powerful ministry that ended up, well, it ended up being very, very powerful. He started out and he's talking to the Corinthian church in his first letter to them and he said, my preaching and my teaching was not with persuasive words of man's wisdom. He, he, didn't, he didn't come to them with enticement, trying to make them serve Jesus, make them get saved, trying to convince them. He said, no, how I came to you, I, I came in weakness. The Bible says that the weak will declare I am strong. Right. Amen. Yeah. So when I am weak, here's what Paul learned through being weak. We look at weakness as a as a fault or an error. We look at weakness as something that's disdained. But weakness in God's eyes is is a sign of surrender. Yeah. It's a sign of humility. God likes weak people. Yeah. And I'm not talking about people that that just uh, claim to not be a, I can't do it. Well, you know, that's not weakness. That's complaining. It's a difference. Weakness is a surrender. It's a it's a posture. It's saying, God, I don't have it all together, but I still am available for you. Yes, yes, yes. I don't have all the answers, but I know you do. You yes. are the answer. Yes. That's what weakness is. Weakness is acknowledging that I'm not all put together as I like to be, but God's got me. That's what weakness is. Paul said, I came to you in weakness. I came as a person submitted to God. I came as a person that didn't have all the answers, but I had faith. Amen. And he said, so the demonstration that, uh, that God used through me was because of the power of faith that I operated in. When you operate in the power of faith, what follows the power of faith is demonstration. Yeah. You are operating in faith, and faith then has an application which displays the, the, the glory and the splendor of God. That's what happens with faith. That's why we have to have faith. We, if we don't have faith, we will never, ever have manifestation or demonstration. Wow. Amen. That's right. It's because of your faith that everything you have right now at this very moment in your life, everything you have, you got it by faith. Faith is, it's, you know, in Hebrews 11, we, we talk about it's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The simple version of faith is the power to believe God. Come on, that's good. It's the capacity you have to believe God. And every man has the capacity to to believe God. Every one of us. The Bible says God gives every man a measure of faith. So all of us have the capacity to believe God. Even the agnostic and the atheist have the capacity to believe God. That's why they fight God. Right. Because they they believe that there is a God. You ask an, an atheist, well, so you believe there is no God? Yeah. I believe there is no God. So how can you believe in something that you don't believe in? Because if you don't believe there is no God, then why are you saying there is no God? You just wouldn't even acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. You right. believe there is a God right. because you're saying, I don't believe there is a God, but you call him God. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why do you call him God if you don't even believe that he exists? Right. See, he has within him, within his heart. We're talking about the heart this morning and faith in the heart. Okay? With his heart, he really believes every spirit being came from God. Wow. The, what God gave man that he didn't give any other creative being was a brain, was a mind. mind. Uh -huh. He gave man a mind. That's it. The only thing that separates a man from a monkey is his mind. Amen. Wow. Amen. Everything else you can find in a donkey. <laughs> Everything else you can find in a donkey. Really, what separates you from the donkey is the mind that God gave you. He gave you a heart that is very much like his heart, and that heart has the power to believe things that it cannot see. That heart has the power.
power to look beyond where you are right now, your heart has the ability to see your tomorrow. Amen. How do I know? Because you can start thinking about the bills you got to pay on Thursday. <laughs> So you already thought about Thursday. So you're already seeing on Thursday what needs to take care of. As a matter of fact, your heart is seeing tomorrow. You know you got to get up at 6 o'clock and get at it. So you already see it. You have the ability to see into tomorrow. You can do things at four o'clock. You can do things that you that, that a monkey can't do because you have a heart that the monkey don't have. God gave you something that was like himself, and it's the heart. And that heart has the ability to believe the gift. Yeah, 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 yeah. Has the ability to believe the giver. Yeah. So when people say, well, I don't believe, I don't know if I believe all that. You believe all that. You are just stuck in a place that, that you have not moved beyond. And that is the natural man, the carnal man. The carnal man does not believe God. The, car the carnal man does not believe in the power of God. Mm -hmm. It believes God. It does not believe in the power of God. Because in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it says that the carnal man is an enemy to God. Yeah. So an enemy is an opposer, mm -hmm. always opposing that which is opposite of. Uh -huh. That's what an enemy is. It's an opposer. Yeah. Mm. So when, our, when we're operating in our car carnality, we're literally opposing God. Mm -hmm. And that's why your faith diminishes in carnality. There's a story in Matthew chapter 17 where a man brings his son to the disciples to be healed. The boy is suffering from epilepsy, and he brings his son, and the disciples are working hard at it, man. They, you know how those preachers, they push you down, uh, yeah. and you're having your head in a head grip? Yeah. In the name of Jesus, and you fall down, be healed, and then you get up and your back hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. never happened to anybody. Yeah. It was just me. But they're screaming and spitting all over you, and you're just oh, like, you just really want to get it over with. Is what you're really praying for at that point. And nothing happens. That's the disciples. They're just screaming and screaming and trying to cast out this demon. They know this boy got a demon because he's in an affliction. Anytime there is an affliction, there is also a, a spirit and sent to afflict you. So they know, knew that they were dealing with a spirit. They just didn't know how to deal with the spirit. And the reason why they didn't know how to deal with the spirit is the Bible said because they lacked the faith to deal with that spirit. You are not ready to deal with every demon that is in the world. So stop going out trying to chase demons now. Deal with what you are capable of dealing with in terms of your level of faith. Some people's faith are higher and they can go after those kinds of demons. But if you know you're in a season where your faith is low or you're just in a season of struggle, that's not the time to go after those prince demons. Because you don't have the faith to do to take that thing down. It takes faith believing that I am capable. Believing that I have divine authority to be able to do that, to do it. Amen. That's what it takes. Amen. So Paul, uh, these disciples are, they are trying hard to get this demon out and they can't. They can't get this demon out. And Jesus says to, he says, bring the boy to me. So they bring the boy to Jesus and the father says, if you can heal my son, please heal my son. And Jesus has a conversation with the father. But the end result is Jesus cast the demon out and the boy, the Bible says the boy is healed instantaneously. He's healed right away. Yeah. And then the disciples, when they're left alone with Jesus, they, hear, they get alone with Jesus and they say, how was you able to do that? I mean, why, why could we do that? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Wow. Because of your lack of faith. That's why you couldn't cast that demon out. Mm -hmm. Jesus did something that the disciples could have done had they had the faith to do it. Ah, come mm -hmm. on. Yeah. They could have done it had they had the faith to do it. And then when he was alone with them, he said, now this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Right. So there are some things that, uh, that are only going to get accomplished because your faith is ignited by prayer and fasting, which tells us that fasting and prayer increases the power of faith within you. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And it gives you the ability to do what not everybody else could do. Right. The disciples had been walking with Jesus, yet they couldn't cast the demon out. Right. And that's a faith lesson. Jesus was teaching us all a principle right there that if we're going to operate in, in a level where we are casting out demons and we are healing people, we're laying hands on the sick, we're seeing signs, wonders, and miracles, uh -huh. we're going to need to operate in the faith that causes the manifestation of that to happen. If you don't have the faith for that to happen, it won't happen. Unbelief will really 
hinder your ability to operate in miracles. If you're going through a dry season, a difficult season, the enemy will start to target your faith and he'll just hit your faith and hit your faith and hit your faith. And before you know it, you start thinking, maybe I, maybe I did something wrong. You start looking in the opposite direction. You start looking at the lies that the devil is saying rather than the truth and why God is allowing that process to happen. Oftentimes, adversity increases your faith. Amen. Yes, Amen. Oftentimes, yeah. Yeah. adversity increases your faith. Yes. Because it causes you, you, it gets you to a point where you can only trust God. Yeah. Have you ever been to a place where oh, uh, God yeah. is all you yeah. got? You can yeah. only trust God. Uh -huh. Like uh, you have no other options. There's nobody else to help you. Nobody else you can count on, call, borrow from. All you got is God. We see that in, in, all throughout the Bible. We see that when these guys ended up, these miraculous faith giants ended up in the hall of faith, Hebrews chapter 11, the reason why they ended up in the hall of faith is because they all went through circumstances that was so adverse to what the, to their own natural abilities that they had to develop faith in order to even get through that thing. Yeah, right. yeah, amen. They had to develop faith. Abraham, a great man of faith. As a matter of fact, we call him the father of faith. Yes. Abraham had a faith situation. His faith situation was God gave him a promise. He said, you, I, I want to show you what your promise looked like. Your seed will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And Abraham goes out there and he looks at the stars in the sky and he sees billions of stars. And God said, that's how your seed's going to be. Yet, Abraham was in a place where uh, he, he, he couldn't produce that kind of miracle. Mm -hmm. His loins was dried up, so he wasn't in his baby-making years. Yeah. And Sarah's womb was, the Bible says, as good as dead, so she couldn't produce either. So God told them that they were going to have something that was impossible for them to have based upon where they was in life. Okay, that's for somebody right there. Based upon where you are in life, God has told you something that's impossible for you based upon where you are in life. And God said to Abraham, this is going to happen. And, and, and Abraham, the Bible says, he believed God. So he went and believed God and started telling people, hey, God's going to give me a baby. Sarah's going to have a baby and everybody started laughing. Can you imagine people laughing at you year after year after uh, year after yeah. year like, yeah, God's going to give you a baby. Oh, you're going to have all of these children. I mean, hey, I don't know if you realize this, but the baby making machine is done. It's the house. That, that part of your life is closed up. Abraham continued to believe God. Even when he Amen. told his wife, the Bible says she laughed at him. Right. She laughed at him. Yeah. Yet he continued to believe God. That was a faith situation. Yeah. That faith situation caused Abraham to have to believe God for something he couldn't possibly Maybe. produce himself. Uh, yeah. come on. And because he believed, we all know the story. Abraham conceived, Sarah conceived. And it was all because he believed and then she got to a point where she believed. Amen. And when you believe, you do conceive. You will give birth to your baby. You will give birth yeah. to your destiny Amen. when you believe. But Amen. if you don't believe, you'll never conceive. That's You'll right. just be going in the tent doing stuff. <laughs> without producing stuff. Come on. Come on. But yeah. when Abraham finally got to that, Sarah finally got to that point where she connected to Abraham's faith and they believed God no matter no no matter what, no matter what, Abraham went in that tent and made something happen. Amen. <laughs> and Isaac was born. Amen. <laughs> Back to the story. Because <laughs> y'all went, oh yeah, he made something happen in that tent. <laughs> Paul talks about this kind of faith, the power of faith in the text that we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He talks about the power of faith and how our faith cannot stand in the wisdom of God. That's the world's kind of faith, mm -hmm. where I believe what people say. I believe if somebody said it. I know that God speaks prophetically. I believe God speaks prophetically. I believe in the office of the prophet. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the spirit of the Lord has been poured out in this dispensation of time on all believers. Because yeah. Joel prophesied that. That I believe that our sons and our daughters will prophesy. I believe children have the ability to prophesy. That Amen. means they can declare the future Amen. according yes. to the Amen. word of God. Amen. I believe that. Yes. But I don't believe everything that everybody says. Right. Right. I don't. Yes. The Bible says try the spirit by the spirit. 
So because here's why there's many false prophets have gone out. The Bible says this. I'm not talking about you. If that's you. This is what the Bible says. And I believe in teaching the Bible. Amen. It says many false prophets have gone out and, and, and in these last days. And so people are going to say things that is going to cause your ear to itch. Yeah. That means they're going to say things that you're going to like to hear. And if you start going after just the things you like to hear, you don't have you don't have this power of faith. You have human faith. Yeah. You have what is called human wisdom. Uh -huh. The wisdom of this world. I only want to hear the things that make me feel good. No, say some things to me that challenge me because that's how God does. God speaks to me and he speaks challenging things. He tells me to step out on the water. That's challenging. I don't want to just hear what I want to hear because I only believe what I can see. If you believe what you can see, you will never ever have mountain moving faith or operate in the power of faith. Right. Amen. Amen. Lord. Because power yeah. is ability. The ability to produce. That's what power is. Yeah. Power is might. Yeah. It's dominion. It's supernatural strength. That's what power is. Men in power change the world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Men in power change the world. When you've got power, you've got influence. Yeah. That's why God puts us in positions of power because he wants us to influence our world and change it. He sent 12 men out with power. That the ability to change the world. Yeah, yeah. And here's what the people in Ephesus said when they saw him. They said, these men who have turned the world yeah. upside okay. down Come is on. now here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The world knew they were operating in power. They had influence to change the world. Yeah. That's what power is. And that kind of power only comes when you're operating in faith. Yeah. Faith and power are synonymous. Uh -huh. They're synonymous. They are the same as. Wherever you find faith, you're going to find power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to find a demonstration of power, not just power. Come on. Power isn't the ability to yell and scream. Come on. Power isn't the ability to make people afraid of you. Yeah. Power is the ability to change the heart of a man. Yes. Yes. To cause him to turn from doing wrong to living right Come on. Yeah. because he was influenced in a positive way. Yes. That's power. Yeah. True power isn't abused, it's used rightly. Yes. Yeah, that's good. True yeah. power isn't abused, it's used right. rightly. Yeah, that's good. The most powerful people in the world love hard. Mm. Uh -huh. When they're really operating in a God-like power, you can tell when people are really operating in a God-like power because they're, it shows through their love, it shows through their actions. I want to influence the world. I know you do. You didn't show up on a Sunday morning just because you wanted to feel good for a moment. You showed up on a Sunday morning because you want an impartation that changes your heart so you can do better. That's why you showed up. If that's not the reason you showed up, then you need to go over there to Pizza Hut, get you a pizza, and go to the park and have a sandwich or something. Have a soda. Turn the football game on. Because you're not here so that you can have impartation and revelation. You're here so you can have entertainment. But if you're here for change, that's what power does. Change. Power changes yeah. the way a man lives, the way a man thinks. Yes. That's what faith does. Faith says, I can do better. Come on, amen, yeah. amen. Yeah. Come on, that's what faith says. Yeah. Faith says, I'm only here for a minute. I'm not stuck in all of this. I know I got something yeah. better ahead of me. That's why I keep believing. That's why I keep going. I know there's a power on the inside of me that ignites my life and it keeps me going even when I power and faith are synonymous yeah. Thank you. really the reason why you want to live a life of faith is because you live a life of power come on. Come on now. let me show you something let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 come on. Come on. Come on. here's what the power of faith look like let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 thank you Jesus Hebrews chapter 11 Hebrews chapter 11. Let's look at verse 34. No, 32. Let's look at verse 32. Hebrews chapter 11. We're talking about the power of faith. Faith is the confident trust 
in God's word. Hebrews chapter 11, you guys are there? Yes. Let's look at verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued, who through faith had the power to take down. That's what this is really saying. Yeah. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, st stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the, the, the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valid in battle, turned to fight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead a, a raised from women received their dead raised to life again. Mm -hmm. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of marking and scourging, yes, and chains of imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sworn in two, sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and in caves. All these having obtained a good testimony through faith. Did not receive the promise, God having provided a something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Here it is. These men and women shut the mouth of lions, quenched the fiery fire, moved and, 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 and tur overturned violence. They did unspeakable things, and now their names is forever written in the word of God as faith giants, uh -huh. as faith heroes. These And some of them didn't even see all the promises that God had for them, yet it did not deter their faith. I mean, can you still believe God when you don't get what you want? Yeah, yeah. Can you still believe? I mean, you can say it right now. Right. Are you saying that in your heart? If tomorrow you don't get what you want, if tomorrow you go to work and they tell you we're laying off, we're cutting back, and you're one that we cut back, can you still say yes and amen? Yes. Can you be like Job and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? Can you be like that? Yeah, you can if you have faith, because your faith is not in the things of this world, but in the power of God. That's what Paul was saying. Paul said, I've come to you in weakness and in trembling, speaking to you. He said, preaching to you words that have a demonstration of faith, that your faith, now he's talking to you about faith. He said that your faith does not stand in these worldly things, that you're not, your faith is not hooked up on a job, that you're not so connected to your job, that if God decided to disconnect you to give you something much better, you won't go. Your faith is not in what you can see. Your faith in what God is in what Christ has done for you and what the Lord is saying pertaining to your life. That's where your faith is. That's real faith. That's the power of faith. The power of faith gives you the ability to influence others by faith. You don't move away from your faith. Nobody can talk you out of your faith. Nobody can talk me out of being saved. I've been through too much hell already. So you can't talk me out of being saved. I might not have gotten everything that God had promised me yet, but I know it's on the way. I know it's on the way. You can't talk me out of Jesus. You can talk me out of maybe some other stuff, but Jesus, I can't be talked
it should be. Oh, Lord, I don't have all three points. The Lord said, I do.
brilliant minds and the ability to comprehend at high levels usually was a little psychotic. Yes. History teaches that. Look at Einstein. A lot of them was 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 psychotic. So God gave you a measure of faith. He gave you a mind to comprehend who you are and who he is so that you together can partner like faith and power and make it happen. Faith and power like you and God walking together, producing, demonstrating the kingdom of God in the earth and people seeing it and being turned from darkness to light. What a better, the Bible says he that wins souls is wise. How many souls have you won? Oh, that's Write that down. Write that down right there. That's everybody needs to write that down. How many souls have I won? And people don't come to God because you pressure them. Right. They don't come to God because you tell them how sinful they are. As a matter of fact, they usually get a little a little uh, hanky with you when you tell them how sinful they are. Because then they start saying, Well, what about you? Right. <laughs> and don't don't go try to win people that you know know your past because then you start talking to them about Jesus. And if you're not sperm in your faith, then they say, Well, what about you, girl? I remember that night in the club. Mm. Oh. oh, you forgot it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. if your faith is not strong, you you'll be tipping out like the little church mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He that wins souls is wise. Yeah. To wrap this up. Give me some sound, please. To wrap this up, Paul's talking to the Corinthians. And the Corinthian church is very tumultuous. Mm. They have a lot of issues in the Corinthian church. That's why he had to write them twice. (laughs) They are hard-headed. Go back to doing things, you know, excited about the Lord in one season. And then in the next season, they go back to doing things that they used to do. And Paul had to write them again. It's like the Galatians. He's like, who bewitched you? Who tricked you? These people were very much like us. When we're reading this word, we're looking at people who resemble us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, it says, these things were written for our examples. They're examples. These are examples of what we can do. Isn't that a great example? Yes, it is. I'm so glad that I had the power to do what these faith giants did. They're examples. If they can do it, and they didn't have all the stuff that we have. We have a lot of help in our dispensation of time. You can reach the world right where you are. Right. Yeah. If you have a phone. Yeah. Yeah. If you have an iPad. Yeah. So your ministry can extend beyond where you are right now. Yes. Without you even having to ride a donkey to go there. Amen. These guys was on donkeys riding all over the world. You know, you can't ride in your car across town to go to church. What? <laughs> right. I know you heard the Lord, right? (laughs) But faith says, here's what faith does. Faith is an inspiration. Yes, it is. It inspires you to do it. Yes. I'm telling you, it it does. It it says, I I need, I got, I got to do this. And I'm capable of doing this. That's what, that's why we need faith. We need faith more than we need money. Amen. 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 Because faith will get you up on your down day. Yeah. Faith reminds you of your possibilities. Yes. It reminds you of your strength. Yes. It reminds you that God is with you. That's what faith does. Faith never ever tells you what's wrong. It tells you what's right. Amen. Jesus. 